everybody. I'm uh, Tom Ryder with Genesis Plastics Welding. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about uh, PVC and polyurethane replacement in radio frequency plastics welding. Um, before I get started on the overview and the process, um, I've asked a couple guys, but the two new guys in the back, um, do, you, do either of you know much about radio frequency welding? Shaking the head, no? Okay. How about um, the difference between polar and non-polar plastics? Okay, good. We're all on the same page then. We're all on the same boat. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a little bit about our company. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go into is plastic sealing and welding, an, an overview of that, the limitation of heat sealing methods, why you should use radio frequency welding, uh, why you should eliminate PVC, trends in the industry, how to eliminate PVC and polyurethane and RF welding, and then a little bit about my ecogenesis technology. Of course, that's the advertisement, paid advertisement that you get to hear. Um, about Genesis Plastics Welding, we are a contract radio frequency heat sealing company. We make many different products using thermoplastic films, fabrics, and foams. Our proprietary heat sealing technology is called ecogenesis. It allows us to take any RF machine and weld nearly any low loss polymer. We are an FDA registered company. Uh, we do have a class seven clean room uh, for contract manufacturing. Now, when I asked the question about polar and non-polar plastics, the, the main key part of what we're gonna be talking about today or, or the opportunity to replace PVC and polyurethane is in the thermoplastics world. So we're not talking about any materials that are thermoset. And there's a group of polar materials and a group of non-polar materials. And I want to explain that the range of thicknesses that we're talking about is 0.0025 to 0.06. Now, on the polar side, you have PVCs and polyurethanes, EVAs, PETGs, etc. On the non-polar side, you have polyethylenes, polypropylenes, PEEKs, PCs, etc., etc. Now, I'd like to talk about the different types of heat sealing. Now, there's other types of heat sealing outside of this, but I'm, I'm trying to limit it to uh, a 20-minute conversation, so I'm not going to go too in-depth. Uh, what we have is there's impulse sealing, which basically takes a hot wire and, and heats the material up from the top side, melts it, to weld it to the bottom side. We have ultrasonics, which uses basically a horn to vibrate and pass the energy through the material. Of course, everybody knows what adhesives are. We have laser welding, they're sewing, and then of course radio frequency. Radio frequency basically are waves that pass through the material. And if you can imagine that, that my hands are two layers of material, when those layers of material are placed together and the radio frequency passes through those, the, it heats the palms of my hand up first. So it's like cooking a potato in a microwave. You're cooking it from the inside out. So you're, you're actually melting the material together from the inside out and getting a really good thermal bond between the two layers. In most cases, the material actually, the, the weld itself is stronger than the material itself. Now, some differences between the different types of sealing processes. Um, impulse. Well, impulse is great for many different types of opportunities. Some of the limitations, though, are that, that it leaves you only, a, you know, you're only able to make straight lines and simple shapes. On the process of it, it does sometimes take a little bit longer, um, but in most of the cases, it actually has less control over the cooling cycle. So you have to make sure that you stay consistent. Um, with ultrasonics, Ultrasonics is great for rigid materials. Um, I mean, I, I often refer people from radio frequency to ultrasonics when you're welding or trying to bond rigid materials together. Um, in that case, uh, that's part of its limitations too. It doesn't work very well in the flexible film category. And you're also limited to the type of size that you're welding. Uh, because of the horn, you're only doing spot, or what I like to say spot welding, or limited bar length welding. Adhesives, of course, that they're used in many different applications, but they are application dependent. And you do have, sometimes have cure time issues with adhesives. Sewing is very strong. Sewing is a great uh, process of, of putting materials together. The limitation, though, of course, is that they're not airtight. Um, laser welding, it's, uh, you are limited to the materials that you use. It is a little bit slower um, in process and also could possibly be more expensive. 
the radio frequency is not perfect. It does have limitations um, in several factors. Again, I, I mentioned earlier it's not good with rigid materials, but it also has limitation because in most cases, RF is limited to polar materials. Remember, I was telling you about the difference between polar and nonpolar materials. So why would you use radio frequency welding? Well, the, the great thing about radio frequency welding is if you can draw it on a piece of paper, you can actually design a tool in that shape, in that dimension, a two-dimensional shape. So when you go to take a weld, you can weld anything from a small format to really large formats. If you think of anything in anything from Walmart, you know, air, you know, queen size air mattresses, uh, beach balls, uh, high chair pads, all the way to all these different medical devices that are manufactured for sealing, um, whether it be a nasal air bladder uh, to a DVT sleeve or a blood pressure cuff. The great thing about RF with those complicated uh, sizes or multiple formats in in, in one ups fashion. Uh, you're able to make efficient cycle times. Uh, the, the capability to move from one job to another, I mean, when you have a turntable application and the die is set up to where you can actually take that die out of a machine, put an, another die on the machine, in most cases you can change from job to job within 20 minutes to 60 minutes on a, on a turntable application. And then, of course, the wide range of polar materials um, and then the varying weld widths It'll allow you some different capabilities to increase the odds of usefulness in radio frequency. So why would you eliminate PVC? Eliminate PVC. Well, I'm, I'm not opposed to PVC. We use PVC every day, uh, both PVC and polyurethane. They're very good materials. They're not going away. So if anybody's here selling PVC, I'm not trying to offend anybody by any means. Um, there are trends in the market, though, and this presentation is basically to try and help answer some of those trends um, um, and give people options on replacing PVC. Some of the things we do know about why you should eliminate PVC um, are based on things from the American Medical Association. Um, the EPA found out that medical waste incinerators were the number one source of dioxins in the United States. Um, PVC does remain the most widely used plastic in medical devices like IV bags and tubing. Um, and certain PVCs also include DEHP, exposing patients to unsafe amounts of uh, toxins. So there's, there's several reasons listed here why you should eliminate PVC, but it doesn't mean it's the, the necessary evil of everything. I think PVC is still going to be around for a long time to come. Now, some of the trends that are in the industry that we're seeing and part of the opportunities that we have to supply our uh, ecogenesis technology are things like this. Uh, for example, the St. John's Pleasant Valley Hospital uh, recently won an award for making their entire hospital DEHP free. So that's something that is making recognition in the market. Um, and that, that is a trend that some of the hospitals that we're seeing are going to. Um, there are more than 100 healthcare institutions that are reducing or phasing out PVC in the industry. And that's in the hospital industry. There are outside the you know, medical devices uh, companies like Staples that are trying to go in 2012, they're trying to be PVC free. So if you can imagine all the PVC materials that are in, in Staples when you go to the store, three ring binders, calendars, and checkbook covers, and everything else that's made out of PVC, that's a pretty big statement to say. Um, in this particular market that we're in with the medical devices, though, I think that this shows a large trend in the industry and something that we're trying to assist with. Now, how do you eliminate PVC and polyurethane with RF welding? When we talked about some of the limitations of RF welding, radio frequency welding normally does not weld nonpolar materials. So how can you get around that? Well, a great way is to add additives into PVC, like EVAs. Um, EVAs allow there to be polarity, which allows you to weld that material. The only downside to adding EVAs is actually it adds cost to the, the product itself. So when you add cost, of course, that's not a very exciting thing. Um, it can also sacrifice some of the properties in the material. Um, MVTR, moist, moisture vapor transfer rate, is something that could also affect, uh, EVA could also affect taste uh, qualities. Not that anybody's drinking their IV bag, but uh, the hydration bladders and other products like that. Um, adhesives are another good solution. Uh, they can't work on all surfaces, though. They're in, in some cases, they're not very good in the polyethylene area. Um, and they also, you know, can be messy, add additional cost, um, and increase cycle times. 
And then, of course, why I'm here is to talk to you about ecogenesis. Ecogenesis is something that we can actually add to any current RF welding system. It's basically a bolt-on technology. Now, of course, I can't tell you what the secret sauce is. You know, it's an invisible black box that I'm trying to tell you about here, so that's a little bit difficult because it is a proprietary technology. But I can tell you that you're able to take your standard RF equipment, which is 27.12 megahertz, and add our ecogenesis to the system and allows you to weld, to switch from welding PVC to welding polyethylene, polypropylene, or any of those materials that I listed. Um, it does not leave any adhesive, it doesn't require any adhesives, uh, doesn't require the material to have any additives. So uh, you take a Tec Techner Apex TPE or a GLS TPE or a Dow MPE or, you know, all these different polypropylenes, polyethylenes, and other materials that are out there. Without any additives, you can take ecogenesis and weld it on an RF welding machine. So we talked about the different materials, and, and again, I know most of you are not sure the difference between polar and nonpolar, but essentially, if you can think of PVC and, poly and polyurethane in the non -pol in the polar category, excuse me, um, and EVA that gets blended in with it as a solution, those are things you can do with standard RF. Ecogenesis allows us to take that same RF welding equipment without any capital investment and allow you to weld polyethylene, polypropylene, polyesters, and many, many more. So that's, that's about the gist of what opportunities we have to present today for polyurethane and PVC replacement.